Following up on last month's guide on how to buy used camera gear, in this video, we're gonna do the complete opposite. We're gonna be talking about how to sell your camera gear. That includes where to sell it, how to sell it, how to figure out the best prices to maximize getting your money back, and how to avoid getting scammed. And do be sure to stick around for that because I do have a story about how I almost personally got scammed selling one of my lenses. So there's a really important concept here when it comes to selling used camera gear or anything used in general, and that is time versus money. If you need to sell something quickly, you will likely have to price it extremely low. We call that price to sell. Vice versa, if you want to recoup as much money as you possibly can, then likely you will be waiting a while before a guardian angel come out of nowhere to buy your camera gear at the price you're asking for. Just to give you a personal experience, I was trying to sell my Sony 70 200 F2.8 G Master. I bought it three years ago for about $2,600, and the going used market price is about $2,000. And it took me about two months to sell that lens after posting it on Craigslist before it finally sold. I got a lot of inquiries asking me to lower the price. Some were asking for a ridiculous amount, like $1,200, but I was extremely firm with the price, and the patience paid off, and I got the amount that I wanted. Versus this Manfrotto tripod that I was trying to sell, I think it's about $350 to about $400 brand new. Uh, I accidentally priced it at $75, and you can imagine, it sold instantly. The fluid head on that tripod alone was worth $120, so that was my mistake, don't make that mistake. But that's just to give you like two contrasting situations on pricing it low versus pricing something high. So the biggest takeaway in this video that I want you guys to have is be prepared to let go of things for about 75% off their original value. Setting your expectation is really important when it comes to selling used gear. Trying to sell something and trying to recoup 80 to 90% of what you pay for is honestly pretty delusional, and that's coming from experience. Unless the item that you're selling just came out and you barely missed the return window period, or if the item is in hot demand and it's sold out everywhere. So let's go ahead and talk about original boxes and accessories. Some would say original boxes will increase the resale value. And while that is kind of true, to be honest, it won't add too much value to it. I tend to get a good amount of money back selling some of my stuff without having the original boxes. Accessories, on the other hand, is super important. Stuff like batteries, chargers, cases, anything that came originally with the item that you've purchased would definitely help maintain that resale value. If you bought extra accessories and you're including them, uh, that can help incentivize for a quicker sale, though they don't add that much resale value. Honestly, it's gonna depend on what it is. If it's like first party batteries, you can probably bump it up for like a few extra bucks. But third party items like filters or third party batteries, those don't increase that overall resale value. So there's about three methods to selling your camera gear. We're gonna be talking about the easiest way, the semi-easiest way, and the annoying way. <laughs> so the easiest way to sell your camera gear is by trading it in with your local camera store or using sites like MBP or Keh, K-E-H. Uh, usually you get the lowest value through this method. The pros to all of this is that you're selling it really, really quickly. If you want straight money, this is the best options. Now, sometimes your local camera store could be offering trade-in bonus, especially around the holidays, if you're trading in your old camera gear to buy something new from them. The next method is selling locally through Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or using OfferUp. This type of transaction is called peer-to-peer -peer, where you'll be meeting up with another person to sell your camera gear. And this is my most preferred way to selling my stuff. The pros to this method is that you'll likely get the value that you're satisfied with and it's fast and easy transaction if you accept cash. The cons to this method is that it's a lot more effort on your part to craft up the listing, to set up the meeting location and time, and depending on where you live, you may or may not be able to sell your item. Honestly, it's not as bad as it seems. I'm gonna go over how to prep your item for selling and how to craft together a listing later. Now, if you're unable to sell it locally, you can take it to the internet by selling it on online forums or using middleman sites like eBay. The pros to this is that it's gonna give your item a lot more exposure and it's likely gonna make the sale happen. The cons to this though is having to ship the item so you will need to find the right box size, get some uh, packing tape, peanuts, <laughs> they're called peanuts, uh, air cushions to securely pack your items and then have to worry about the item reaching to your buyer. And there's another set of cons for middleman sites like eBay. eBay charges a whopping 10% in service fee. On top of that, PayPal charges a 3% transaction fee. 
it's really not worth it in my opinion unless you really can't find a buyer locally. I sold $1,200 worth of laptops and they ate about $150 in fees. So unless you're running a store with an inventory, I'd say forget about it. Now, if you're selling it over the internet and you need to ship it, you will need to factor in the shipping costs regardless if you're offering free shipping or not. Personally, I do a flat rate um, and expect to pay about $15 to $25 for shipping, and that includes the materials like boxes, packing tapes, and peanuts. Now, even though PayPal charges a 3% transaction fee, it is still the safest method for either parties when it comes to buying or selling things over the internet. You can, of course, tack on the shipping costs and the PayPal fee to the buy but chances are they might reconsider buying because then the cost will start racking up and it might not be worth it on their end. Just something for you to consider. Okay, so let's actually get into how to prep your item for sale. So the first thing that you wanna do is to research the worth of your item. Now, the best way to do this is to look up that item that you're selling on eBay and filter the listings by sold and completed listing. This is gonna give you the most accurate and the recent worth of your item. So after you figure out the worth of your item, the second thing to do is to manage your expectation. Figure out the lowest price that you're willing to sell your item for. Number three, take photos. I know we're all photographers here, okay? But the photos don't need to be world-class. You don't have to shoot in raw and do any sort of fancy editing. I used to do that too, <laughs> and it really did not help selling the gear any faster. If anything, it took even longer because I'm spending way too much time doing all this stuff to sell my items. So JPEGs are okay, phone photos are fine. Just make sure to take the photos in proper lighting and take photos of all the important areas like sensor, glass, and if there's any sort of marks and scuffs that you're noting in your listing, be sure to take photos of those area as well. Moving on to number four, if you're selling cameras, you're gonna have to include the shutter count of the camera as well. So I'll go ahead and link in the description box below a site to figure that out. Moving on to number five, once you have all those information ready on hand, it's time to make the listing. Now you don't wanna have too little or too much detail. So title your listing with the important keywords that includes the brand, the motto, the condition, the price, and the location. For the condition of the item, you wanna give it a rating. Is it new? Is it like new? Is it in excellent condition? Is it in poor condition? Are you selling it for parts only? Be sure to mention any noticeable marks and scuffs on the camera, as well as any sort of defects. Now, these could affect the resale value of your item, depending on how severe the issues are, uh, but just price it accordingly and be honest about it. Shutter count if applicable and price along with the preferred method of payment. I personally say I prefer cash only and we're gonna be talking about why that is later and the sort of different payment options that you should be accepting. Uh, and then I also like to include a two to three sentence essay, what I use the item for and why I'm selling it. This is kind of optional, but I figured since I get asked anyways why I'm selling something, nowadays I just include it. And don't forget, contact info. Might not be a big deal on certain sites like Facebook Marketplace because they'll just use Facebook Messenger. Craigslist have their own little uh, anonymous email exchange system. eBay has their own method as well, but correspond through emails, correspond through text, whatever way you prefer. And finally, upload those photos, post it, and wait for those inquiries to fly in. Now, you'll likely get a lot of inquiries trying to lowball you, and what that means is that they reach out to you asking you to lower your price to some ridiculous amount. I usually don't respond to those messages, or sometimes I will respond with a solid no with a period and proceed to give them the middle finger emoji. Just kidding. But actually, I wanna share with you this strategy that I've tested that helped me make a few sale at the price that I was asking for. And that strategy is, just respond politely. I would say, hey there, unfortunately, that's the best price I can give you. It was only used a handful of times and it's well taken care of. The cost of buying it brand new is about $350. On sale, I've only ever seen it for about $300. $250 is honestly the best price I can give you. Hope you understand. If you're still interested, let me know. And bada beam, bada boom, I sold a lens and a pair of headphones just using this strategy. Sometimes being polite can go a long way. So after several messages and figuring out the logistics of a meeting location, it's time to sell in person. Now, if you're living in the worst timeline like I am right now with the whole COVID-19 pandemic situation happening, uh, wear a mask, bring a pair of gloves, bring some alcohol wipes in case they don't buy your camera gear. But if you're living in the best timeline ever where you don't have to worry about the pandemic, then uh, you can skip that step. 
When it comes to buying or selling stuff in person, always meet during the day in a public space with people and be prepared to be there for at least 15 to 30 minutes. Likely your buyer will be performing some thorough testing with whatever it is that you're trying to sell them. So put on your best attitude if you got one. Just kidding, but I do find that having a friendly and a positive attitude can help ease the tension a little bit. These buyers are spending a copious amount of money buying your used gear, so I personally like to make them feel safe and secure. Speaking of safe and secure, bring a friend along if you can, just for additional safety. That way they can keep an eye out on things and they can hold the item while you count the cash or something. So the funny thing about being a camera YouTuber and selling stuff um, is when people recognize me and they're just like, oh, we know who you are, we trust you and they walk away without testing the camera gear and I'm like, hold up. I'm not about to let you end my whole YouTube career here, okay? Test that first before you walk away. I don't need no public defamation where you go back home and you're just like, Jason Fong sold me a dud of a camera. This guy is a freaking scam. So yeah, it doesn't matter if it's me or another YouTuber or a celebrity, you make sure the item works before you walk away. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the best payment option, and that is cash. In my opinion, it is the safest method of payment. So whenever I'm dealing with large sum of money, I would have the buyer meet me at a bank. That way they can test the camera gear out, and if everything checks out, we will walk into the bank together, I would deposit their money, and if the teller says, hey, it's all good to go, they get to walk away, the buyer gets to walk away with the camera gear. Now, you can accept cash apps like Chase Quick Pay or Venmo, but you'll be using those at your own risk. Lately, I have been accepting Venmo just because of the pandemic, but a couple years ago, I almost got scammed for accepting Venmo as payment. I was trying to sell my Sony 85mm G Master lens for $1,600, and the buyer was asking if he could, he could pay via Venmo, and I was like, sure. However, he was trying to pay me even before getting to the meeting location. Something was fishy here. On top of that, he was like, hey, I can't send you the whole $1,600 amount. Venmo is not letting me. However, I can send you $80 at a time. So this fool was trying to pay me in increments of $80. And I was like, no, either you send me that whole $1,600 amount or you come back with cash. He promptly stopped responding. And guess what? A month later, there was an article of the same mofo that scammed another guy using this exact technique. So what ended up happening was this guy woke up the next morning with Venmo doing a chargeback on all those $80 transactions. So not only did he lose out on the money, but he lost out on his camera gear. I'm like, bruh, I dodged a bullet right there. I felt for the victim, but man, it was a good thing I went with my gut feelings. So how to avoid getting scammed. So my best advice to you is if you see even the slightest hint of a red flag, I would just say avoid the sale. Oh, I'm sorry. I would say just avoid the sale. Aside from that Venmo scam, I would avoid any scam that involves uh, money wiring. If they have to pay you through some weird method that is not cash, I would say don't do it. And if they say they're, oh, they're buying it for their niece and nephew and they're willing to pay you more than your asking price if you ship it out to some other destination, don't do it. If it feels weird, just don't do it. Now, of course, it is case by case. I have shipped a few items before just because the distance between me and the buyer was more than a two hour drive and it wasn't gonna be worth it for either of us to meet up for a 15 or $20 item. So they were okay with paying a little bit of extra for the shipping costs and I was happy to make that sale. So case by case, gut feeling, if it feels wrong, don't do it. Let me know in the comments down below if you had any experience selling camera gear. Whether it's positive or negative, I feel like it's important for the community to read both experiences so they can make their own judgment calls to which method is best for them to sell their own camera gear. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Y'all already know Squarespace, a platform to create a beautiful website, but what's not often highlighted is the e-commerce tool. I actually used it to build out a storefront for my camera garage sale. It's not live now since I sold everything that I needed to sell, but I was surprised how quick and easy it is to get things up and running. You can quickly modify the price, enable sale, and the inventory automatically updates when something gets sold. It even integrates universal payment methods like PayPal for safe and secure transactions between you and your customers. To learn more, head to squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code Jason Vong to save 10%. Thanks for listening, it really does help the channel, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.